What's going on everybody? My name is Ben and welcome on back to the bench. Today guys we are going to be taking a look at the Grex TG3 Titanium. This is the pistol grip airbrush I talked about in the last episode. I wanted to go ahead and give you an unboxing and then do a little bit of spray work with it and just kind of get a feel for how the airbrush functions. So let's go ahead and unbox this sucker first, see how it looks. So it comes in a nice sealable locked case. We have your basic pieces of paper here. We've got some registration information. Of course, we have our instruction booklet. I really should read through the instruction booklet a little bit more than I'm going to, but that's okay. I'll read over it a little bit later when I have more time. I just want to kind of get into the airbrush and check it out and see what it looks like and what it does. Wow, look at this. Very cool. Let's go ahead and spin it around for you so you can get a nice look at what the box holds. So we have a plastic covering in here. We need to pull that off first. There we are. And now it looks like we had a couple parts that popped out of the foam protecting. I think we got this here, which probably goes right there. And we have this uh, probably some sort of a slip joint or something. Oh, yeah. Looks like this fits up inside there. And that probably pushes down into here. Some way. Which way does this go? Oh, nope. Not like that. <laughs> That's not how it goes. Uh, let me get my tweezers here. Flip this around. Here we go. This is how it goes right there. Now it looks like it's some form of a hose fitting of some sort because it is barbed at the end. So that's kind of neat. All right, let's pull out the airbrush, though, and take a look at that. Right off the bat, it is hefty. It's quite heavy, much heavier than my Iwata, but got a lot more meat to it than my Iwata does. We have replaceable and interchangeable paint cups, which is really nice. Look inside there. We've got the needle inside. Should be a 0.3 needle. Let's go ahead and thread this back on. Yeah, look at that. Very cool. Trigger pull is interesting. Interesting. It's very smooth. You can tell where it's just air, and then when it gets air and paint, you can kind of feel that in the lever. Interesting. So the airbrush is mostly metal. It does have some plastic here on the handle. It's got some rubber on the trigger. Very chromed, very smooth, very clean. This plastic handle doesn't look that uncomfortable and it feels pretty decent. It's got a little bit of rubber here where the trigger is just to kind of let your finger kind of fit up right in that little nook right there. It's got a nice comfortable feel. Based on this versus the Iwata, the Iwata is, it's all metal, but this you push down for air and you pull back for paint. That is a pretty standard airbrush configuration. I'm used to that. With the Grex, this isn't the case. So what happens is there's a certain section of the trigger pull that only does air. So right about till there, that's just air. So if you want paint, you go ahead and pull that trigger a little bit more and you can feel it kind of start pulling that needle back. Then you're going to start getting the paint. Very interesting idea. Very, very cool feeling. The needle is actually a little bit exposed in there too. You can kind of see it when it's moving around. <laughs> it's kind of cool. It's a little bit of play in the trigger. I think that's just kind of the way it's designed. Honestly, looking at the Iwata, kind of feeling how it kind of moves and operates. Again, the Iwata is very, very old in terms of airbrushes. I've done a lot of modeling with it, but the Grex is a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. Um, definitely has a nice variable trigger pull to it. I like it. I think I can really get some nice fine lines out of this. Now, again, I did mention last episode, my one gripe with the Iwata is it feels very tiny in my hand. The Grex is very comfortable. It fits in my palm very nicely. My pinky finger and my fourth finger fit right up in there perfectly. I like it. So just kind of waving it around a little bit here, you can kind of tell it's nicely balanced. I don't feel any kind of top heaviness or back heaviness. The Iwata felt a bit more front heavy. This has a nice balance feel to it. Um, again, with the trigger pull and then the handle in the middle, I think it helps to counterbalance the weight of the pink cup up front. And now the natural inclination I have to go ahead and hold this is either using the middle finger or the first finger to go ahead and spray. The first finger on the trigger feels very natural, nothing wrong with that, but I almost kind of want to use my middle finger for that. It's interesting. Also, I was looking here, there is a little knob in the very back of the airbrush that I think is the needle adjustment knob. I think it allows the needle to either go back all the way or to stop and lock it out so it doesn't move the needle very much. It's an interesting idea. Let me go ahead and pull off the back cap as well and to show you this is where the needle attaches into it. It's got one little cinch bolt right here. And we can pull this needle right out. There it is, 0.3 needle. This is about the same size as the Iwata, but this is brand new as opposed to the Iwata that's from 2001. So definitely this should be able to spray a lot finer of a line. Plus it'll be a lot smoother and action as well. Put that right back in, thread that down. I don't want to over tighten it, just thumb tight basically. Then we'll go to screw this back cap on here. And then we'll put in that needle adjustment knob right here as well. It's got a little bit of finickiness there and there. It fits right in there and we just screw it up inside that back cap. There we go. 
perfect. Now I did notice that I'm actually able to use my Iwata Quick Connect. So the hose fits right up in there, threads right onto the back of that airbrush. Not a problem, it's perfect. That'll be really, really handy. Also, this front needle cap right here, it's actually magnetized. The kit comes with two different ones. You have your standard, I guess, 360 degree nozzle, but you also have this one with cutouts on it. All right, let's move on to the spray test, guys. Now, I've got my Grex all ready to go. I've primed it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Let's pour a little bit of XF20 medium gray right into the paint cup, and let's go ahead and give it some spray. Start off with pretty close to the line. Let's get some paint work through the needle there. There we are. See what we can do. It's very smooth, very comfortable, very easy to control, I'm noticing. That's very nice. You can get a pretty fine line here. Get a little closer to the paper. You got to be real careful with how far you pull that trigger back because, again, it's a different feel to the Iwata. Yeah, nice. You can get a nice, decent spray as well. That isn't really even full trigger down either. That's a bit about halfway. So let's try to write my name here. Let me see. Let me get that B E N. Yeah, feels very natural, very, very comfortable. Yeah, you can really get some fine lines. Let's try a little bit of like marbling effect here. See how tiny I can get. Hardly any overspray, guys. Really, the paint kind of goes where you point it, and it doesn't do any spots or anything. It's very clean. Very easy to spray with this airbrush. A little bit more, a little fancy, a little wave action down here. Very cool. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to the Iwata. Check that out. Now, the Iwata, I'm going to spray with a different color now. I'm going to spray with some dark sea blue, also by Tamiya. And let's go ahead and prime the airbrush a little bit here. And let's spray. Now, the Iwata itself is also a 0.3 needle, and it does feel very similar. Though, this is an older airbrush, so I do have a bit of splattering going on, which is probably just a fault of my own. I need to clean it up, refresh it a little bit, and then it should operate pretty decently. The Iwata is not as comfortable. The Grex is super comfortable, guys. So with the spray test kind of finished up here, I have to say with my initial impressions here on the Grex, it is super easy to control, very comfortable in the hand, very well balanced. Compared to the Iwata, the Iwata tends to be a bit more front heavy. It is very tiny in my hand, and uh, of course, because it's old, it doesn't operate as easily as the Grex. Even with just spraying basic lines, a little bit I did with the Grex, I can already tell that my grip is way more connected. I have plenty to grip on. I think it's going to be a success. We do have three different sized pink cups. The large one is, I think, a little bit too large for the work I do. So I'm probably go down to the medium size one. I think it's a bit comparable to the Iwata, which has a built-in pink cup. I think the medium one will be the way to go. But we'll stick with the small one for now. No big deal. Overall, man, this is a really nice airbrush, guys. There is one thing I do want to mention, though. Now, the Iwata is a basic airbrush. You pull back for paint, push down for air. But the Grex is all one trigger pull. Now... Let's say you're spraying along with your airbrush and you do a quick paint swap and you want to go ahead and just clean out the front nozzle to make sure you don't get any contamination. You can easily just retract that needle without pushing any air, take a Q-tip, clean it out in the front to swap it out, spray it a bit, you're good to go. There isn't really much of an issue. The Grex, though, you can't do that with because, again, it's all one pull. So in order to do that kind of clean out in the front there, you have to actually retract the needle manually clean out the front, and then push it back through, lock it down, you're ready to go. Also, with that front nose cap being magnetized, I could see myself kind of cleaning off that airbrush and forgetting it's magnetized and just knock that clean off, and you lose your needle cap. So I don't know how realistic that scenario is, but I think it could definitely be something to think about. Okay, so my final thoughts. What do I think about the Grex versus the Iwata? I got to tell you, both of these airbrushes are fantastic and they are thoroughbreds in their own right. The Iwata itself is a more traditional feel. It's got that double action. I've used it a lot of years though, guys, so the inside is looking a little worse for wear, and then I need to go and refresh it up and clean it up, then it might perform pretty close to the Grex. The Grex, though, being brand new, it just super smooth, very easy to use. It fits beautifully in there. I think cleanup on the Grex will be just as easy as the Iwata, if not a little easier, because you can really get a Q-tip right down in there, clean everything out. The Iwata has a very angular trench on the inside where that needle passes through so obviously i think the grex wins a couple points on that also the grex has this really cool needle adjustment that's awesome i think the new iwatas have something very similar to that again i don't know why i would need that but it's kind of fun to go ahead and use it i'm sure i'll make good use of it eventually it's got replaceable paint cups which is also very very nice it's got a good feel well balanced honestly the grex is far more comfortable than the iwata but I gotta tell you, the Grex is a beautiful airbrush, and I'm very excited to go ahead and use it, put it through its paces, 
If you guys are interested in a trigger airbrush and you have a little bit more money to spend, I would definitely recommend the Grex. It fits my hand beautifully. The trigger is beautiful. Spraying with the Iwata versus spraying with the Grex. The Grex is a cleaner line. It's a tighter line. It's just overall a newer, fresher airbrush. So the Grex is definitely going to make its appearance on the next model I build. We're going to give it a try. Really put us through its paces. Try different paint cups. Try different paint colors. We're really going to try to see what we can do with that. Next week, we're going to try to get another video out to you guys, show you what I'm going to be building because I'm actually working on a couple of ideas. So hopefully next week, we'll have another video for you guys on an actual model kit itself. But until then, guys, thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you back here next week on Ben Builds. Until then, have fun, build something cool. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you soon.